Good morning. Reverend Tony here out for a morning walk with my friend Pancake. This morning I'm thinking about God and Santa Claus. So why don't you take a walk with us? Part of me loves the song Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I know I love the stop motion, claymation, banking and rass Santa Claus is Coming to Town that I grew up with. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. You know Santa's coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for... Wait a minute. He sounds like a stalker. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. Where is he? He's like some creepy disembodied spirit in a horror movie following you around. And if he's not available, you get his evil sidekick, the elf on the shelf. Where does this come from? I don't want to have that kind of Santa Claus. That kind of Santa Claus kind of creeps me out. And I think it promotes some ideas that aren't so healthy. Love the song, it's catchy, it's cute. Some people think about God this way. God is a cosmic police officer that's always watching you. You're under surveillance. It's like a creepy big brother. Keeping a checklist, whether you've been bad or good. And if you get too many bad check marks, you go to hell and get punished forever. The idea of God that I much rather have around is whatever is at the center of everything that's about love and goodness and kindness and compassion and fairness. And that doesn't sound like the Santa Claus that's in Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Nor is it the God a lot of people seem to believe in. I much prefer the image of Santa Claus in a very famous and true story, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, about a young girl in the late 19th century who wrote a letter to the editor of a New York newspaper asking if there was a Santa Claus. And the editor's reply has become famous, and it is republished and relived every year at Christmas time. It's a great great story. So listen to this story. We'll think a little more about it after. Laura Virginia O'Hanlon was born in 1889, the daughter of the New York City coroner, Dr. Philip O'Hanlon. She grew up in the city and attended public schools. As a schoolgirl, she argued with her friends about the existence of Santa Claus. When she asked her father about it, he suggested that she write a letter to the editor of the New York Sun which was his preferred daily newspaper, and asked the son her question. He told her, if you see it in the sun, it's so. Virginia sent her letter to the son in the late summer. The letter was published as a lead-in to the editorial response. Prefacing the letter was this. We take pleasure in answering at once, and thus prominently, the communication below, expressing at the same time our great gratification that its faithful author is numbered among the friends of the sun. Dear Editor, I am eight years old. Some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus. Papa says if you see it in the sun, it's so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? Virginia O'Hanlon, 115 West 95th Street. The response was published as an unsigned editorial on Tuesday, September 21st, 1897. The editorial is the most reprinted and republished newspaper editorial ever. It has been published countless times in countries and languages around the world. Upon his death in 1906 at age 67, the Sun revealed that the principal author of the editorial was Francis Farcellus Church. Church was a native of Rochester, New York, the son of a preacher and a graduate of Columbia University. 
Serving as a war correspondent during the Civil War began a career in journalism. Along with his brother William, Church started two publications, the Army and Navy Journal in 1863 and Galaxy Magazine, which later merged into The Atlantic in 1866. By the late 1890s, Church was the lead editorial writer for his brother William's newspaper, The New York Sun. His response to Virginia O'Hanlon was, Virginia, your little friends are wrong. They have been affected by the skepticism of a skeptical age. They do not believe except they see. They think that nothing can be which is not comprehensible by their little minds. All minds, Virginia, whether they be men's or children's, are little. In this great universe of ours, man is a mere insect, an ant. In his intellect, as compared with the boundless world about him, as measured by the intelligence capable of grasping the whole of truth and knowledge. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exist, and you know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. Alas, how dreary would the world be if there were no Santa Claus. It would be as dreary as if there were no Virginias. There would be no childlike faith then, no poetry, no romance, to make tolerable this existence. We should have no enjoyment except in sense and sight. The eternal light with which childhood fills the world would be extinguished. Not believe in Santa Claus? You might as well not believe in fairies. You might get your papa to hire men to watch in all the chimneys on Christmas Eve to catch Santa Claus, but even if they did not see Santa Claus coming down, what would that prove? Nobody sees Santa Claus, but that is no sign there is no Santa Claus. The most real things in the world are those that neither children nor men can see. Did you ever see fairies dancing on the lawn? Of course not. That's no proof they are not there. Nobody can conceive or imagine all the wonders there are unseen and unseeable in this world. You may tear apart the baby's rattle and see what makes the noise inside. But there is a veil covering the unseen world which not the strongest man, nor even the united strength of all the strongest men that ever lived could tear apart. Only faith, fancy, poetry, love, romance can push aside that curtain and view the picture and supernal beauty and glory beyond. Is it all real? Ah, oh, Virginia, in all this world there is nothing else real and abiding. No Santa Claus? Thank God he lives and lives forever. A thousand years from now, Virginia, nay, ten times ten thousand years from now, he will continue to make glad the heart of childhood. Virginia O'Hanlon grew up to attend Hunter College, graduated in 1910. She earned her master's degree from Columbia in 1912 and her doctorate from Fordham in 1930. She was a teacher and a principal in New York schools until her retirement in 1959. She married in 1910, but eventually divorced, and she died in 1971. O'Hanlon lived with her fame all through her life. The local newspaper published her letter every Christmas season until 1949. Other journals also kept the tradition of publishing the letter and editorial response annually. The editorial is the most reprinted and republished newspaper editorial ever. Various animated shorts as well as full-length movies have been made of the story of the letter and its response. O'Hanlon regularly read the letter and editorial response at churches, often to children. She became a church and child celebrity in New York. She became a regular guest at church ceremonies, reading her letter to the children. The original letter remains in the possession of her family, now with her great-grandson. CBS Sunday Morning television program recently did a profile of the letter in the family. Over the years, they've been offered a lot of money at various times to sell the letter, but have no plans to let it out of their family. Although his tombstone in Sleepy Hollow, New York reads, A Noble Man Full of Grace and Truth, Francis Church was a well-known curmudgeon, a natural skeptic, and had nothing positive to say about superstition or religion. 
Because of this, he didn't want his name associated with the editorial. I love Francis Church as Santa Claus. Now, the thing about Francis Church is he was a well-known curmudgeon. He was a skeptic and didn't think much of fairy tales, superstition, and religion. And yet, he writes this amazing piece about what Santa Claus might be like. And it's a piece we can buy into, even if we can't take the story and the image and the character literally we can understand it metaphorically and how important it is. I wonder sometimes, being such a skeptic and a curmudgeon, if Church was writing to himself as much as Little Virginia. I wonder if Church was addressing his own inner child that had lost a sense of innocence and wonder. If you need to recapture a little innocence and joy and wonder this Christmas, think about Santa the way Francis Church did. A Santa you can take seriously, even if you can't take it literally. We'll see you next time. Pancake and I would really appreciate it if you could hit that thumbs up button, give this a like, and subscribe to the channel. It would really help us out. And you won't miss any of the great videos that we're making. Thanks a lot.